This is a CBS News special, America Decides, the Republican National Convention. Now reporting, Nora O'Donnell. Good evening and welcome to America Decides Campaign 2024 and CBS News coverage of the Republican National Convention here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin right now. That's right. You see the former president, Donald Trump, in his first public appearance. You can see the bandage on his ear. Let's listen in. You will hear this crowd go electric. The bullet missed him just enough to save his life to be the next president of the United States. For this song, we have believed for so long that God will make some changes in this country. And he's about to make a change in the current administration and send them home. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Tonight, we make the decision on what's right for America. More prosperity, less gas prices, less food prices, help for our veterans, and God bless our military wherever they are in this United States. And abroad, there would be no war if there wasn't and any when President Trump Please was welcome the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. fifth president of the United States walking on the floor of the convention. You can see that his right ear bandaged after being grazed by a bullet just 48 hours ago. You can hear now many of the delegates and attendees here are singing along with this song. see the president being greeted by close supporters, including Tucker Carlson and his family in the VIP family box there. Many of his family were instrumental in pushing Senator J.D. Vance to be the vice presidential pick. And that's our first shot of the two of them together. Lee Greenwood just saying, you will not take this man down. Robert Costa. A moment where former President Trump is visibly showing some emotion. This is someone who so often is projecting political confidence. The last time I've seen this kind of expression, I've covered him for a long time, was on election night 2016, when he seemed to be stunned by victory, now taken aback clearly by the reception here at the Republican National Convention, opening night, a former president recovering from an assassination attempt. The crowd on its feet, cheering former President Trump, there with his running mate, just 39 years old, J.D. Vance, presenting a generational contrast. This has echoes of other moments in American history. 1981, when President Ronald Reagan shot and came to crowds months after, after recovering. But this is beyond parties. We've seen Democrats like Gabriel Giffords, Republicans, like President Reagan shot. Resilience is a part of the American character, whether you are Republican or Democrat, carrying on. Tonight, President Trump, former President Trump does just that. Day one of a convention, back to politics, but also a human moment as well. And such 
a critical one for the country to see the former president having just survived an assassination attempt in a public setting. There's lots of security here, of course, the highest security levels you can have in the country right here. But seeing him in public around people is significant for the country to see. And Nora, it's worth pointing out, and I think Robert made an excellent point about the look on former President Trump's face. He looks emotional. Softer, more emotional, less aggressive than he typically does in face of a partisan crowd. That, I think, is being absorbed by this crowd and the nation writ large. John Dickerson, your thoughts? Well, uh, you all have covered the, this extraordinary and dramatic moment. Um, I would just note one other comeback uh, by the former president. There was a time after the uh, riots of January 6th where the leaders, the Republican leaders in the House and the Senate blamed him for lying to the country and leading uh, to that attempt to disenfranchise 81 million people. Uh, after that, there was a period where many people thought that's the end of Donald Trump and in the Republican Party. Glenn Youngkin, governor of Virginia, who spoke so fulsomely about Donald, Donald Trump tonight, ran away from Trump when he ran for governor in Virginia. Then in 2022, when Trump's candidates didn't do very well, people thought, well, that's really the end of it for Donald Trump. Before the tragic events of Saturday, it was already an extraordinary story that Donald Trump, who had been vilified by the leaders of the Senate and House in his own party, came to a convention that is as unified as anybody can think of in modern memory. That was the, that was the comeback that existed before this physical and emotional one we're seeing right now. Chance and now, we the, love Trump, and he, there was also chance of fight. Remember, that is what former President Trump yelled as he left the rally stage in Butler, Pennsylvania on Saturday. Now they're taking his seat. He was raising his fist in the air just as he did on Saturday after that assassination attempt. This is also a, a crowd that is moved as well, many of them holding up their phones, taking pictures, some of them emotional, seeing Donald Trump for the first time as well with his bandaged ear. I want to check in with Tony DeCopel, who is on the floor of this convention. Tony? Uh, Nora, I am in the friends and family section. Uh, the vantage point I have is of about five seats in from the Trump box. I can see the former president and the Speaker of the House uh, and J.D. Vance and the future of the Republican Party there, as well as what they hope will be the next president of the United States. I watched his approach, and sitting right next to me is Brenda here. Brenda's from California, San Diego, and there are tears in your eyes right now. Tell me what you're thinking. I'm speechless. I'm looking at a man who has sacrificed so much, been through so much, been scrutinized, drugged through the mud for this country, and all of these people are here for him. And the fact that he's here is just, I find it overwhelming and touching that He's not hiding. He's not scared. He is ready to defend our country and take it back. I'm just so honored to be here and to be in, in the presence of all of this. And I emotionally, I, normally I keep it together. <laughs> it's okay. I, I think this is the intended effect. And you're not the only one I've noticed with tears in her eyes. Uh, and, and Nora, folks up there in the box, uh, there was a lot of excitement. The phones came out of the pockets in this uh, area of the arena. But there was a lot of, uh, of somber reflection as well. You could see the cheers. You could see the shouts, the applause, but also the sense that it could have been otherwise. And that's why you see the crying here, the emotion from, from Brenda, and why you have a sense of significance that has entered the room that might not have been here otherwise. And in fact, we know for certain that typically a candidate does not appear on the first night of their party's convention, but here we go. Everything changed on Saturday, and we are seeing that change in the Trump family box with the former president himself right at this moment. T Tony, thank you very much. There's a specialness to this moment, obviously, for the Trump family, people who know the former president very well, but also for the American democratic system. When President Biden addressed the nation from the Oval Office just the other day, he said American voters should make the final decision on who wins the White House. The ballot box is where decisions are made, not by those who use weapons and political violence. And you see tonight in day one at the Republican National Convention, 
a country, a party moving forward in the wake of this wound of an assassination attempt. And that's something that is moving people here inside the arena in Milwaukee, perhaps across the country. And Nora, Tony's interview with Brenda from my hometown of San Diego exemplifies something which is important to understand about Trump's relationship to the Republican Party and the Republican Party's relationship to Donald Trump. Many Republicans like Brenda believe that former President Trump has been overly scrutinized, has been hounded, has been vilified. Whether that's true or not, that's what they feel personally. And they believe he has gone through this not only to be a political actor, but on their behalf. And they feel a connection to him that transcends ideology, party labels, or anything, and this is my conversation over and over and over with Trump supporters, than they ever fell for any other political candidate in their lifetimes. Brenda's tears are a reflection of that emotional connection that is more than political. And in this moment, it is highly visible and totally genuine.